We're back here on the Morning Brew where we're celebrating Mother Earth Day with our friends from the Ministry of Planning and Development. And we're putting the spotlight on pollution. Mm -hmm. uh, pollution of our air, pollution of our water resources, pollution of the land. Yeah, we have been responsible for doing some terrible things to Mother Earth, but we here in Trinidad and Tobago are trying our best to reverse some of that. To tell us more about what the ministry is spearheading, we've got uh, Kema Gardner, she's a waste management specialist, and uh, Tushara Mirage, environmental engineering specialist. So good morning to you ladies. Happy Mother Earth Day to you. Thank you. Good morning. Hey, good morning. All right. I want to I want to find out about you know in terms of pollution, um, chemical pollution from our industrial activity is one of the ways that we have been damaging the quality of air we breathe, as well as damaging uh, our land, which we need to grow food and 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 get other resources from. Uh, uh, Kima Gardner, Kima Gardner, could you could you start us off with that? Yes, certainly. So thank you so much for having us on your program this morning. So we're going to speak about a particular group of chemicals called persistent organic pollutants. Now, these group, this, these chemicals were recognized for their toxicity in the environment. Um, they are very persistent, so they remain chemically intact for long periods of time. And they are also highly mobile, which means they travel long distances, even in places where they're not even produced. And so in recognition of this, the global community came together to deal with these chemicals through uh, the adoption of a agreement called the Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutants. Now, as it relates to your question, there are three major categories of POPs. So there are pesticides, there are industrial chemicals, and an unintentionally produced POPs. So as it relates to the industrial chemicals, those are the ones that you, as you, you know, you would have related to, um, are used within the industrial sector, but they also can be found in some consumer products as well. Mm. Um, Tishara, in terms of Trinidad and Tobago dealing with its POPs, what are we doing? Um, to reduce these? So currently we are undertaking numerous projects. We are involved in a POPs communications rollout at the moment and Ms. Gardner can actually speak to this more in depth and she can give more detail. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Kima Gardner, tell us about the, the, um, the public education program. Because I've seen some of I've seen some of those on your Facebook page um, where you're telling people what the pups are and how they can go about reducing pups to reduce pollution. Yeah. yeah. Really happy to hear that you've actually seen some of the materials. So that's part of our national campaign. Um, as part of a regional project, we're undertaking with about eight of the countries within the Caribbean region. And so as part of this communications campaign, the idea is to raise awareness on the dangers of these pops, the methods on which you can be exposed, and how you could, of course, go about reducing your exposure and safeguarding your family health as well as yours. Um, so within the program itself, we would have done a national advertising campaign, which consisted of some radio ads, some TV ads, some video animations. Um, we would have also done some articles on, on social media as well and sharing information. We also have had some promotional items, such as my La Felpin hair, um, that we are also sharing with the public to, you know, to try to raise awareness of the dangers and toxicity um, behind this, these dangerous chemicals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen I've seen the the animation for um, stop the pops, uh, which basically makes me feel like I can be a superhero and stop the pops. So yeah. definitely, <laughs> that's working. Um, With information, I'm inviting public to go to www.stopthepops.com. There is a wealth of information available on the site, the various pops categories, and of course, most importantly, how you too can go about stopping the pops. Okay, so we can be a hero for Mother Earth and stop the pops. As she said, stopthepops.com. Find out what they are and how you can, uh, you know, reduce their use or eliminate them altogether. In terms of other activities, though, uh, what are we doing specifically in this regard? Because I'm sure you would probably have been working with industry uh, to, to help them with their processes so that they can reduce uh, their pop product, pops production, yeah? 
Yes, exactly. So excellent question. So we would have conducted an inventory on these pups. Um, we would have done an initial inventory around 2013 with the 12 pups that were listed on the Stockholm Convention. And in 2016, we would have updated that inventory to include the additional pups. Coming out of that inventory, we developed a national implementation plan. Now, this plan, or the NIP, which is that which we call it for short, is essentially a roadmap that outlines the measures the country will take to reduce and or eliminate the threat posed by pups. So as part of this process, it is a multi-stakeholder process. And so specific activities within the NIP would have been assigned to various sectors of various entities. So the idea here is to have that multi-stakeholder collaboration. So it includes industry, it includes the public sector, private sector, everyone coming on board to ensure we can do all that's necessary to reduce that threat posed by pops. Mm. Uh, to Shara Mirage, uh, in terms of, you know, general water pollution and air pollution, I know that the Ministry has been uh, conducting some studies to measure the extent of that in certain parts of the country. Um, can you can, can are you able to share any of the information that that would have come out of, of those studies or or are they still ongoing and what's involved in doing a study like that? Okay, so if I'm not mistaken, I think you're referring to the ecological risk assessment that was conducted by the EME in the Gulf of Paria region. So I am not particularly engaged in that project, and I don't have details, but I'm sure an EME representative can give more details on that, because mm -hmm. I thought will be forthcoming soon, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. but, in, but getting data like that is going to be key to any policy that um, the ministry is going to come up with uh, as we go forward in our efforts to reduce our carbon footprint, uh, to, to help protect the ozone layer, to reduce pollution, which actually impacts on our health as human beings, doesn't it? Most definitely, coming out of these sorts of projects, we would be able to obtain baseline data of the existing state of our environment, which can then feed into policy outcomes and, and objectives of the government moving forward on how to properly regulate these issues as it pertains to water pollution, soil pollution, ecological risks. So definitely, it's, it's an important part of our work. Let's go into a little more detail with regard to um, the POPs, Stop the POPs program, uh, Kima Gardner. Just as a matter of interest, paint a scenario of everyday life where we are generating POPs and we don't even realize it. I mean, we don't have to be a big business. We can be an ordinary citizen generating POPs and, and we're not even realizing it. What does that look like for the ordinary man in the street so that he can understand why stopping the POPs is so important? Right, so it's not so much about generating, but it's about your contact and exposure to the pops. And the thing about it is these pops are found in everyday household items. So your consumer products, so the electronics that you use, the devices, the electronic devices we are using now, they are flame retardants in them to stop or slow the spread of any fires. Um, your kitchenware may be lined or coated with pops. The clothes that you wear might actually have, again, flame retardants. Again, depending on the industry you're in, you know, to try and reduce the spread of the flammability of fires, it could also apply to your mattresses, your carpets, your curtains, the furniture that you use, the pesticides, if you're doing the home gardening. So it's quite extensive and quite ubiquitous in its nature. So basically, uh, everything about modern life is uh, generating pops or created with pops. Exactly, and that's, the, the SEO is essentially that these pops were created for a useful purpose. So as I mentioned before, the flame retardants, um, we had, for example, DDT, which is very popular, which was used for vector control um, against malaria, mosquito that causes malaria. And of course, as time went by, scientists realized the devastating impacts these chemicals were having on the environment. And so essentially, yes, so while they have become integrated in our daily lives, we have to be cognizant now of the dangers surrounding the use of these chemicals. And then a major challenge comes when we have to dispose of these after they've outlived their usefulness and then they wind up in a landfill somewhere and then go on to pollute the air and the water courses. Wow, exactly. this is the stuff of nightmares, Kima Gardner. But no, we're trying to create positivity and, you know, make it not too, not too drastic and scary to the, to the national public. So the idea here is to try and create awareness and increase person's knowledge and change their behavior as well to try to reduce that environmental and human impact. Mm -hmm.
uh, to Shara Mirage. Um, if we had to, to talk to, say, uh, a, a, a little kindergartner or, or a child in primary school about how important it is uh, to protect the environment, is it easier for them to understand, you know, protecting Mother Earth than it is for a grown-up and to adapt behaviors? What have you, what have you guys seen, you know, when you, when you try to deal with these issues? I definitely believe that because I think they're more in tune to nature and things as they are naturally as, com as com compared to adults who have been tainted, I guess, by the material world and we're more engaged with having our comforts. I think they would see the value quicker in saying, turn off the tap when you're brushing your teeth or don't, mommy, don't buy this sort of blanket. It's not good for us or the mattresses or something like that because it's easier for them to adapt to a change earlier. And I think that is key to have education from an earlier stage so that they can grow with these habits and these, these thought processes and then carry it forward. So definitely our kids, our youth, they are integral in, in having any sort of sustainable future. And I guess if if um, if little Johnny or or little Anne Marie keeps saying no, turn off the tap, don't let it run, don't let the water waste while you're brushing your teeth, if they say it enough times, then maybe mommy and daddy would start to do the same thing, right? Definitely, that's that's the hope that it can move forward. You pay it forward. You be like, if my if my little child can see the sense in this and see the the value in this, then what what it is what is it for me to to practice it as well? All right, Tushara Mirage and Akima Gardner, thank you so much for giving us time this morning and happy Mother Earth Day to the both of you. And I am so encouraged now to go and, and, and stop the pops. And I'm a little more mindful of how much of what I rely on for everyday life um, could actually be hurting the planet. Thank you so much and uh, have a great day.